the reason that I'm here is because um, you are going to help me as human beings figure out what went wrong in my life. Because um, for 25 years or so, I was a rather successful scientist. And scientists are doing the most wonderful thing, trying to find out the truth about the world. You know, and then and scientists spend their careers studying which bacteria caused this disease, and if it's this bacteria, then it's not the other bacteria, right? So there's truth here, but sometimes scientists argue and they have different dogmas. But shouldn't that be the pinnacle of human aspiration? Why would I abandon a career as a serious scientist for a writer of silly, ridiculous children's books? And because I do not know the answer to that, I have 300 clever human beings and perhaps one bot, and you're all going to help me solve the answer to that. So, but before you do, uh, please, a little bit of kindness. We're here to talk on kindness in, uh, in education. So please take out your smartphones and see whether you can find my book, which was translated into German, especially for you. So please search uh, Der König. Okay, hold on a second. Who speaks the Deutsch? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he said. And would you please, would you please raise your hand when you find my book, please? I want to see 300 hands here. Yes, it's, it, go to Google, Google Deutschland, and see if you can find my book. I'm not going to continue until I see a lot of hands. Okay, so. And there's a special message to CDTM on the first page of the story. So your homework now is to read the rest of the book and maybe write me a book. That would be something special. So um, why would you spend so much time writing children's fiction? Well, there's many reasons. Um, there's only one truth, perhaps. but. When you're a children's book writer, everything is interesting except the truth. So yes, I know that physicists would say, say that a bus cannot take off from outside your house and fly into outer space, there's gravity and thrust and what have you, but in a children's book, why not? I mean, if you wanted to find out what the fairy, uh, the tooth fairy, really does with the teeth, then you do have to take this bus. Um, another example, it takes nature millions of years to evolve an animal. You know, but if you're sitting at home, you have this idea for an animal called a picadillo. Uh, there's seven of them. Each one has a different birthday every week. And they lie on top of each other and do very little. Uh, it just takes a minute to create a new animal. And in a sense, the picadillos exist. You can look for them on Google, so they do exist. Okay. Or not. Um, and here's the beginning of my story. A young child in Ottawa, in Canada, uh, during the daytime, of course, I was an experimentalist looking for the truth the way we all did when we were three-year-old kids. But at night, something marvelous happened. My father would read me all kinds of children's stories, many of them coming from Germany. Uh, and my favorite was um, Madeline by Ludwig Bettelmanns. I don't know if any of you know these in a house in Paris, all covered in vines. There were 12 little girls and two straight lines. Uh, and of course, Peter Pan. And I had two books about Peter Pan, each one produced by a different publishing house. And in each one, Peter Pan was depicted by a different artist. And as a three-year-old, this was crazy. And I would say to my daddy, what's going on? Show me which book is the real Peter Pan. Um, and then I went to kindergarten. In kindergarten, I was Jewish, in a non-Jewish kindergarten. I had to pray to Jesus every day. I was left-handed. They spent the whole year trying to get me to write with my right hand. They failed. And I'm still Jewish, by the way. <laughs> and I realized in kindergarten that I was a misfit, or what I call now a misfish. 
And many of you here are misfish, right? Like uh, Jeff the misfish in the story, who uh, wears purple goggles, uh, takes showers, and uh, gets kicked out of school, his fish school, for asking too many questions. Does that sound familiar? Yes, of course it does. Um, but uh, I grew up also loving science. And um, when I was like you, a young person, I had a, a dilemma. I wanted to be, in my heart, uh, I wanted to be a um, children's book writer and a musician. Uh, in my brain, and perhaps according to my family, I should be, I should be a scientist. And I did send a few manuscripts out. By the way, I wrote a story called The Tower of Babel, uh, forgetting that there was maybe a more famous version somewhere. Uh, and of course, it came back, it was rejected, and I had a terrible audition as a musician, and as default, I became a professor of microbiology. And, um, and I studied how bacteria stick to oil droplets. By the way, I must say that I believe that inventors do not think outside that box you saw earlier. They think between boxes. What you're doing, is, or should be, is connecting boxes in amazing ways. Computers have more trouble doing this than clever humans. Um, so at some stage in my career, I combined oil pollution with oral pollution and came up with a mouthwash, together with Dr. Irving Weiss and others, um, that bacteria are uh, attracted to the oil surface, and when you spit out, you can see them in the sink. This mouthwash actually became very successful, uh, and as a result, I became a professor of Mundgeruch. <laughs> and um, I used to say I was the world expert in Mundgeruch in bad breath. Um, and it's very modest because really there, there's only three of us and each one said that he was the world expert, so that was okay. And I spent a whole career as a scientist. I smelled about 10,000 mouths. Um, I did some Korpegeruch, so I spent, I smelled a few thousand armpits perhaps. And, and, and Fiskeruch, and I actually invented a shoe spray that exploded on the way to Japan. Um, <laughs> um, but at the same time, I had this yearning to be a children's book writer. So at the age of 45, my first children's book came out, uh, Bacteria Galore by Sunday 4, in Hebrew, English, and Arabic. And um, on the one hand, I was very proud, but I remember I was also very embarrassed. Because at the book launch, I said to myself, oh no, professors are going to come, the jazz police, and they are going to deride me, not only for being a professor of Mundgeruch, but for writing children's books. Even though this was a scientific children's book on how bacteria are, I was even, I showed that they don't have faces, and, and so on and so forth. But then I couldn't help myself, and as the years passed, I began writing more and more and more children's books. And what I did, is um, I used the, the dental story as the other box of my stories, you see? So this is about a, a witch that turns a girl into a talking toothbrush. Uh, this was an invention that didn't succeed, so it became a page in one of my children's books. Uh, sometimes I would hide products I was working on in the various pages. Um, and this one is my most recent book. This is about a dragon that has motgeruch because he falls in love with garlic and onion flavored ice cream. <laughs> and you can scratch the book and actually smell the bad odors. There's also strawberry ice cream, but the kids love to scratch the, the garlic, of course, yes. We were all kids. Um, yes, so we move on now. Um, do I have anybody in the audience who can do beatbox with me? Anybody? Out of 300 students? Not even one. Gino, can you do beatbox? <laughs> Okay, so um, this is perhaps my favorite series. Uh, I've written dozens of books, and all the animals wanted to be with you today. Um, but Dr. Cluck prevailed. Dr. Cluck is a sage rooster uh, diagnostician who stands on his head, drinks gin and tonic between his patients, and, and is a great, uh, great diagnostician. He has several pu uh, patients. Uh, Gloomerous, oops, sorry. Gloomerous, the... Uh, 
the laughing hyena with no sense of humor. <laughs> Some humans have better senses of humor than computers, but not all of them. Um, and this is Kenya the cant guru who cannot jump high. <laughs> and this is Tim the porcupine who uh, wakes up one morning and just like Kafka's story of the cockroach, his, uh, his quills are on backwards. Dr. Cluck, of course, has a solution for each one of these patients. Uh, and because he's a very extrovert a physician, he also sings. Uh, so I will sing without a beatbox. My name is Dr. Cluck III. What a rooster, what a bird. My father was a famous duck. His father, too, was no dumb cluck. And through his muscle, I continue to muster every verb and sinew to lend a wing to others who are not as successful as you. So if you feel like you're in the ceiling, sing of your humps down in the dumps. Or just out of luck, why not give a call to Dr. Cluck? <laughs> So, um, together with the, a genius web developer, Ron Sternin, and my wife, who's the CEO of our books, we created, uh, with money that we made from the mouthwash, a, a website where everybody can be an author. It's the world's simplest free platform for creating digital picture books of any kind. Uh, and you would do me great honor if you had a look later on today and wrote me a little message, mail it our books. Uh, and this is my uh, way of paying back, according to Esther's talk, children all over the world are using this to create their own books on all kinds of subjects. We have 13,000 books, 100 a day, by the end of 2017 we should have 40,000 or 50,000 books. Um, and another thing that we've done is, together with Dr. Alon Amit, we've used a scientific approach to creating children's stories. So, according to 48 Creed for Storytelling, what you do is you take a few things to write about from this list, a few characters to write about from this list, and a few states of mind to write about. And you're not going to believe this, but this actually works. And people come up with amazing original stories. So, here we are, back at the beginning. I left Tel Aviv University eight years ago to do my thing, which includes writing children's stories. Uh, I have a New Year's resolution to write 1,000 stories in 2017. As the Jews would say, oy vey. Uh, but at least I have a mission to do, and I'm going to leave it to you to try and figure out why I left science to do what I love. Thank you very much. <laughs>